Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ranjit Sa, an infectious disease expert and as well as the clinical, clinical microbiologist. So today we will be starting a revision of the USMLE Step 1 2021 that is uh, uh, with the microbiological section I am beginning today. I know USMLE is a tough journey, a big and long and frustrating journey but remember this is the best way to get a a good doctor in the world. This medical education, the USML is one of the best way to make you and the best in the world. So let's begin this uh, USML step 1 2021. I'll, since we are uh, beginning with the microbiological section of the step 1, goes to the page number 124, then you will see the first page about the microbiology, about the structure of this bacteria. So we are talking about the bacterial structure. Look, any medical education, any basic, mainly basic principle magic education, like basic science, the basic science has, unless it has a clinical application, it doesn't make any sense. So USMLE will make you, USMLE will urge you to be a, uh, have a clinical application of your basic knowledge, basic science knowledge. So let's begin. So since we are talking about the microbiology, you know microbiology, uh, it is known as the micros microscopic organism, the organism which we cannot see through our naked eye. These are the only organism that can seen under the microscope. So we are talking about something that is beyond our eye, beyond our normal eye. We need an added eye. We need a man microscope to study the like, organism structure and all details. So, talking about this, we have drawn the picture of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. You, when you go through this uh, chapter, first uh, page number 124, then you will see that there are the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And in gram-positive and gram-negative, there are uh, certain structures like they both have the capsule, they have the cell wall, they have the cell membrane, and the whole bacteria cell is there. You have to remember one thing that they have some differences in between them. The major differences is in the cell wall. The cell wall of the gram-positive bacteria are full of peptidoglycans. They have a 82-85 sheath layer of this peptidoglycan layer, whereas in the gram-negative there are very few, one to two or two to three layers only. So that is the main difference between gram-positive and gram-negative. Then there is a extra membrane that is called outer membrane in gram-negative bacteria. And why that is important? Because that extra membrane differentiates from other functions. It has an extra membrane that prevent a lot of things to enter inside it. It has only, a, if you see the extra, outer, extra membrane called outer membrane, it has LPS, porins and lipoprotein. So through this porins, this porins, this is the, uh, you can say outer membrane and this through porins it only allow anything to come in and come or go outside. So all the drugs which need to be go inside the bacteria and kill them should enter inside this porins. So this should be a smaller size enough to enter inside this porin. That is the main uh, factor that determines in gram-negative bacteria. All the drugs we made should be a smaller in size. Larger size drugs doesn't act on the gram-negative bacteria. They only act on gram-positive bacteria. Okay. Then they have the, this LPS called lipopolysaccharide. This lipopolysaccharide has a function like O antigen, has a three part O antigen, core, and lipid A. This O antigen, core, and lipid A. Lipid A is responsible for the lip toxicity, that is, endotoxic shock. So any bacteria that has the lipid A and this lipid A is who have gram negative bacteria doesn't have in the gram positive bacteria. It is only in the gram negative bacteria that you have to remember. And this lipid A is responsible for endotoxic shock. It is uh, uh, induced this uh, in TNF alpha and interleukin 6 and there are the other mechanism which we will discuss in the later uh, uh, classes about that endotoxic shock developed by the gram negative bacteria when we are dealing with the toxins. So the major thing is they both have the similar structure, they have capsule, they have cell wall, there is difference in the cell wall, there is difference in the peptidoglycan layer, the cytoplasmic membrane almost same, they have the uh, uh, this uh, lipid bilayer. We just go through the structure that has been mentioned. They have mentioned that in that page if you go there is the name of the appendages. So a bacteria like us has a locomotory organs that is Flagellum. This, if you see this flagellum, flagellum is half in the mortality. So if there is the bacteria in your gut, they goes to the where into your urethral alter system. How they go? They through the locomotory organs. They travel through the locomotory organs. They are easily more. They are most of them are easily motile. Then they have an additional structure called pilus or fimbria. This pilus or fimbria has a special function of attaching to the cell surface. If you see that bacteria has transferred from the gut into the urinary tract system, then they attach into the urethra and firmly. 
so if you urinate the force of urine doesn't wash that bacteria why because they have been attached to your urethral cell very tightly through what with the help of this pilosol fembrae so this is the attachment this helps in ad adherence to the cell surface among this there some of the bacteria has this sex pilus which help in the conjugation between one and another bacteria so they can transfer their genetic material by forming the conjugation tube with another bacteria through the sex pilus okay so we have understood that this both uh, flagellum and but they have two different functions one is for the motility one is moving and another is for for the attachment that you have to understand then they have a specialized structure called a spore a spore is usually present only in the gram positive bacteria we are talking about this why this spore a spore is a unique formation where the bacteria if found that there is a harsh condition there is a difficult situation outside and it is impossible for them to survive then they convert themselves into the spore and when they get a proper environment appropriate environment then again visit it out into the normal bacteria so this is the way of protection for themselves so spore is a, a specialized structure they convert themselves into hard condition and they that is formed by the dipyclonic acid which is only present in the gram positive bacteria they have the keratin coat dna peptidoglycan but they can survive for the years and years in the spores while in a normal state they can't survive long so a spore help them to survive for a long time and they are is the hard condition they are not easily destroyed they are not easily damaged and they can be a mode of transmission so the spore can be in the environment when but when they can get contact into our own body or any animals or human then they got the living things they got all, all the appropriate food and they again germinate onto the normal bacteria and then they spread they attack you they cause the disease to you then there is another uh, structure like salmin bolop salmin bolop structure which you have been drawn here there is a capsule you have seen that this capsule the capsule is made of the polysaccharide here comes the important point they are made of the polysaccharide layer so all bacteria whatever in the world they are all uh, capsule is made of the polysaccharide layer except the one and this is the important now this is the poly bacillus anthracis which capsule is made of the polydeglutamate so all bacteria capsule is made of the polysaccharide except the one that is the bacillus anthracis and which is made of the polydeglutamate so that is the important one and that you should remember because it can be a one question so there is another uh, term like glycocalyx you have understood the capsule and okay, what does capsule do capsule prevent us from phagocytosis if they have a capsule a bacteria is a capsulated then they can easily invade the phagocytosis and in phagocytosis is the process by killing a bacteria by our own immune system if they in, uh, uh, inhibit phagocytosis means they can uh, invade they can bypass our immune system that is meaning that so there is a glycocalyx what is glycocalyx glycocalyx is same structure like but is a loosely organized polysaccharide and what is its function its function is those bacteria has this glycocalyx they go and attach to the uh, indwelling catheters if you have put the uh, if you have gone to the icu you have put the indwelling catheters you have put the iv line you have put the stent then they goes there and they then form a biofilm layer by layer and it is very difficult to eradicate the organism which has this glycocalyx which they form the biofilm and it is will become either you have to remove the surgically and then a antibiotic would work otherwise on the biofilm it is very difficult for antibiotic to eradicate the biofilm so those organisms having glycocalyx are very difficult to treat if they have already formed the biofilm and that is the clinical point of importance now outer membrane we have discussed a little bit about outer membrane outer membrane has what component three component mainly lipopolysaccharide porins and lipoprotein among them proteins in fact uh, function i have told you that it helps in the transport across the cell membrane then lipopolysaccharide this is the structural protein only and the lipopolysaccharide has the o antigen which is o antigen somatic antigen and this somatic antigen is help for the antigenicity of this bacteria then there is a core part and there is a lipid a lipid a is the main important function of responsible for endotoxic shock that you have to understand very clearly that is any gram negative bacteria is causing endotoxic shock why because they contain the lipid a lipid a induce this interleukin 6 and tnf alpha and they are responsible for our formation of endotoxic shock so this endotoxic shock is only possible because of the lipid a and it is uh, which is present only in the gram negative bacteria so all gram negative bacteria can cause endotoxic shock not but the gram positive bacteria that you have to remember then there is a periplasmic space periplasmic space is the space between the this cell wall and the cell membrane so this both in this cell wall and cell membrane there is a space there is a space this no space is known as the periplasmic space so between the look periplasm the cytoplasm and this cell wall there is a small space and this small space 
the usually bacteria put uh, what um, destructive enzyme they have this drug resistant enzyme is present in this periplasmic space so if you have a penicillin or any beta lactam antibiotic and you're using it and gram negative bacteria already have this uh, beta lactamase enzyme in that periplasmic space then they will destroy your drug and their drug will be no useful so such bacteria will be that uh, resistant to that drug and so drug resistant enzyme is present in this periplasmic space that is beta lactamase then there is another uh, component cell wall we have already discussed this is cell wall cell wall is mainly in gram positive form of the uh, peptidoglycan layer wherein the gram negative is composed of mainly outer membrane okay now what does the main function of the cell wall the cell wall protects from the osmotic damage you know every uh, cell that is bacterial cell are hypertonic they have the in one cell they have constituted everything inside they have uh, all the cytoplasm dna rna everything inside this one cell and when it enters our body our body fluid is isotonic so when there is isotonic and hypertonic the fluid transfer from the isotope to hypertonic so since the bacterial if there is a no rigid cell wall the water will enter inside of the bacterial cell and bacterial cell will swell and rust and die so for to promote to prevent that cell wall is a one of the boundary cell wall protects against the osmotic pressure damage okay and now lastly the cytoplasm membrane the cytoplasm membrane is formed by the a phosphate delivered bilayer but it has an important clinical point that it contains the penicillin binding protein what is penicillin binding protein penicillin binding protein is usually located over here and they are responsible for binding of the penicillin so when you give a drug the drug goes to the penicillin binding protein and then attach there and inhibit that penicillin binding protein once the penicillin binding protein is attached inhibited then they will not produce the transpeptidate enzyme and since there is no further enzyme of transpeptidase there will no formation of the cell wall cell wall will become porous and the back again the water entered inside into the cell cell will swell and burst so penicillin binding protein is important for action of the penicillin if there is any modification in the penicillin binding protein then there will development of the uh, drug resistant bug like mrsa so this all are important this all are the one thing we have to understand the bacteria have this structure like it has the outer organ one single bacteria you can it can has locomotory organ like flagellum there's a phylus and there is a lipotychoic acid in case of the gram positive only which is, can cause this endotoxic like shock but remember endotoxic shock is mainly in the gram negative bacteria and why because due to the endotoxic activity of lps lipopolysaccharide and if you go to the pinpoint that is the lipid a which is responsible for the gram negative endotoxic shock that is important then it has a structure like uh, you can this pore is the one on the condition which form in the harsh environment and then there is the uh, its uh, cellular structures cell envelope is come complete composed of the capsule capsule help in the phagocytosis it is a polysaccharide of layer then some can get glycocalyx that help in the biofilm formation there is the outer membrane in the gram negative so that is uh, cause a lot of protection they have endotoxic activity they does not allow the big drug to enter inside the bacterial cell then there is the um, periplasmic space which contains the beta lactamase enzyme there is the cell wall that protects the bacteria in both case from the osmotic and outer pressure cytoplasmic membrane has the penicillin binding protein which help in the action of this penicillin so we have concluded the important uh, structure of this bacteria and they are responsible their clinical importance and then that can be a very uh, if this knowledge can be applied to ask you a one or few questions thank you